Now this is one of the earlier types of plug-in relays and this one is a Westinghouse relay from the West Coast Modernization back in the 1950s. As you can see, it's quite a lot significantly larger than the modern 930 series relays that you'll see later in the video. Also, it has two other different uh, approaches. Firstly, it has a release pin. Lifting this release pin allows you to just unplug the relay. And secondly, it has a test pin. Now, there's a small tool that I've actually got in the garage there, it's a wooden handled tool, that you actually use to lift this up and down to operate the relay and drop it. Um, very much similar though to a modern 930 relay, though quite a lot bigger. And one other benefit of this relay, you'll see mentioned in a lot in this video, this one actually has a telltale on it, so you can tell whether the relay's up or down or not. Um, to show you there, you can just see it's got a little energised, de-energised label on it and a little telltale pointer just there. So that's quite a useful thing about this relay. Same thing, the details are all there on the label on the top. Um, and that's pretty much a early Westinghouse relay. And this is what it looks like once you've unplugged the relay. So as you can see, we have our contacts here. Um, something to note here, the contacts aren't A, B, C, D, then rows of 10, 20, 30, and 40. So this would be row one plus one, so that's 11. This would be 12, that'd be 21, 22, and so on and so forth. And when we operate our little test pin at the back, it just breaks those contacts there to de-energize the relay. And we still have our pin code arrangement, our uh, coils, etc. Um, so we've still got all the similar arrangement we have on a modern 930 series relay as well. This one is an AEI GRS type relay. It is, again, an earlier design, uh, primarily in use on the West Coast mainline. And one difference here, you'll see on this, again, we don't have our clip on the front like we have on the modern 930 relays. These are held in by some small thumb screws that can be sealed in as well. Um, these two bolts go all the way through to the rear and hold this relay on so you can actually slide it on and off. Again, it has a pin code on the back and all the same arrangements that you have on a modern 930 relay. Um, you've got the contact uh, details there and for the other details. You can see quite clearly inside. The earlier covers were not that great. They did yellow after time, but at least you can still see inside and see the contacts should you need to. Um, again, size quite large. My hand fits entirely within its casing. So uh, you need a lot of space in the cupboard for these. Now one little relay I'd like to just show you is this, and this is the style PN1 DC line relay. These are a miniature version built in the 1950s, 60s and 70s. And as you can appreciate, they're quite tightly packed in in the cupboard. Some of them do actually have a telltale indicator on the front of them. But what you invariably find is like this. If you notice very carefully, the little red mark just there, if you can just see it. Can you see it there? On the armchair and that red mark is quite handy for working out which one's up or down this one as you can see is up this one as you can see is down not that you can also notice the back contacts are broken on that one made on that one so there's, there's various well sorry the other way around the front contacts are made on that one the back contacts are made on that one so you can you can tell but it's uh, a lot better on the old blibber relays where you've actually got the needle and it says energized and de-energized on it very small uh, simple little relays great for fitting in cupboards a lot of these were made quite redundant on the west coast modernization they're held in with screws um, just coming from just at the back there on the relay block um, they do have black bases on um, and then a, a base below that which is a, a small pm1 blue base lovely little relays though to work with and quite uh, quite effective for heritage railway movements so here we have our recovered 930 style relay bases from some location cupboards we purchased recently and you'll notice they are white in colour which is one of the latest models there is a grey uh, base now as well previous to this there were the blue bases which lasted quite about 20 20 30 years and previous to that was the black bases um, we try and avoid the black bases now as there were some problems with phenolic resin allowing silver migration between the uh, contacts so what would you, you would get is you would get um, you get silver paths tracking between one contact and the next and it would it would last very briefly um, so tiny and small through the through the actual plastic um, that it would burn out with a bit of current and you get wrong side failures there was quite a few wrong side failures were put on especially around Cardiff area signals would clear when they shouldn't do uh, and then they disappear for years you wouldn't see them again and then suddenly it come back again and in the end they worked out that there was there was silver migration 
going through the phenolic resin. So those bases were changed out, black bases were changed out to the blue bases, and obviously we moved on then to different plastics again, white bases and gray bases. Now, one thing to notice with your 930 um, plug base, this is looking from the relay side. So this is where all your contacts with the relays go in. Um, we're backwards here, so this would be row A, row B, row C, row D, one to eight, and then obviously you have your coils, R1, R2, R3, R4. Um, you have your pin code, which I'll show you a picture of in a minute. And there's a lettered pin code, which applies to every single thing. So this relay here would be an 063 pin code that goes in there. This is a 003 pin code that goes in there. And you can see the holes drilling are different. Uh, about a three and a half, four mil hole uh, drill to drill them out. And that's part of the, the pin code. Um, this aperture here, there's some relays that have a bolt in on the through the uh, the coil through the, uh, the actual coil and that bolt pops out into there sometimes um, there is a metal clip that goes from the top to the bottom some different designs of them for the different ages of relays um, and that holds the relays in tight and your contacts come in from the back end we've turned our relay base around now and you can see the back here and you can see as i mentioned rows a b c and d one through to eight and then you have the R1, R2, over there, R3, R4. You notice these old wires, which we haven't removed yet, they're colour coded. And the pins that go in here, the crimps, there's different designs for each relay. And once you push in, they have a small lip on them that traps them in so they can't come back out again. It's quite hard to pull them out. Um, to get these out, you have a spade remover. You'll notice the bottom of the spade hole there has a slightly wider aperture. And that's where you place your spade remover in and basically what it does it lifts the little lip up so that you can then push and pull them out there are different designs for different relays the blibber relays have a small plastic insert here that goes between the two um, that is very fine it's almost like a piece of cellophane and that can cause problems if you don't know how to get that out with, with the removal tool these are quite hard so you don't tend to get much problems with these you can get intermittent damage every now and then and again these wires will have been colour coded with their lead correct labels as well. But that's the standard 930 modern pin base and you can see the holes there for the pin codes where the pins pop through the back. Just for demonstration I've fitted this pin code 189 which is a motor timer relay QMT timer relay into the base there you can see it sits down quite snug and if I just take this out turn it round you'll notice on the base there there's the pins they effectively act as a pin code and one thing to notice with a lot of the heritage relays is if you look very carefully make sure that the contacts haven't been bent too wide open um, you can see they're nice and tight together there you just start looking for big gaps that start appearing around the contacts there and obviously any damage that you can see on the relays themselves <laughs> We're going to have a look at some modern standard 930 series relays here. And the first thing I'm going to start off with, a couple of basics here. We're going to find our twin relay. So as you appreciate, twin coils, as you see there. So we've got two sets of coils. So we have a left-hand set of contacts and a right-hand set of contacts. And one thing we can tell here, if we, if we know our nomenclature here, Q, Q style, there's two Bs there. So B refers to coil. So BB is a twin coil, A1 type. So we have a few details on the front of this. We have our left hand and right hand contact numbers. So as you can see there's six front contacts and two back contacts on there, on the left and also on the right. We can see the pickup voltage, the specification of the relay, and we can see that pin code, which is all important for mounting it into the base. But we can see, if we remember our nomenclature, Q style, BB is a twin coil. BB is a twin coil. So we can see there, we have twin coils. We can get our resistance there on the bottom, 1,100 uh, ohms on that one. I'll just put that to one side. Moving on, this is a different style again. This is our QMT, so it's a Q style motor timer. And this one effectively has a motor in it and a pair of contacts. So there's hot and cold contacts, as we call them. The cold contacts are where you start. So it will time around after a period of time that you define by setting this little plate on the front here, which is then sealed. 
once it's reached that time, it then has to reset and go all the way back round. And you'll see these motor contacts here go all the way back round. And that's the hot contacts are when it's timed and then the cold contacts are when it's reset. Uh, so that's a QMT motor timer relay. They use a special little trimmer tool for adjusting these. It's, a, it's not a screwdriver, it's a little trimmer tool. There are other versions of that which are electronic, but I won't go into that. Here we have quite a heavy one. Now this is a QECXE for lamp checking or proving type. And what you'll notice, it's got a um, diode block in it uh, and also a um, variable resistance. Now this is used to take some of the voltage that's driving your signal lamp, convert it from the AC to the DC. It's then borrows some of that voltage to pick this coil. So should your signal lamp go out, this relay will then deactivate and warn the signal when the lamp's gone out. So that's a QECX type relay. Uh, this one here, again, is a very heavy coil. Um, there's a lot of, lot of windings in there. This is a track relay, so it's a Q-style track relay, AC, immune. Um, and that's the design of that one, but it's at very low voltages. So in this case, it's a two volt pickup. There are some that pick at about 1.4 volts as well. Moving on again. This one is quite an interesting one. There's two versions of this. Now, the giveaway is the L. So it's a Q-style L, it's a latched relay. And what you gotta look very carefully at, this is the pickup coil, but you also have a de-energizing coil. There's a permanent magnet in here. Once this relay is energized, it will stay in that state, even when you unplug it. So when you come to put these in to change them or replace them, you have to make sure that these are in the same state as the one that came out. And effectively what there is, is a de-latching circuit here. So this extra coil wrapped around the soft iron magnet that's in there, which form, you can just see it there, there's a soft iron magnet in there, that, that destroys the magnetic field of the soft iron magnet so that this will de-latch and can be driven down. These are very similar to the um, polar neutral relays that I mentioned in the first part of this series on the shell type relays. And it remembers the position in which it was last in. And that's quite handy. Again, I'll show you another latched relay. Again, QL for latched. And the giveaway this time is this red stripe across the front. And you'll see a lot of these on the 1980s, 1990s relays. Again, you can see the delatching coil there and the pickup coil there. But the red stripe on these ones tells you it's a latched relay, not um, unlike the shell type relays where the red stripe told you that it was a line relay. You could put 12 volts on it. This is just something a little different. This is a QR15 relay, very similar to the Borough relays used in the, electric, uh, the RASC signalling um, from the 1950s, 1960s, 1970s. Um, it's basically four small miniature relays inside a standard 930 plug. And this was used a lot for remote interlockings, um, especially using telephone circuits, telephone wires. And the Borough relays are slightly different in that they actually have four LEDs, which is really relays on there so you can see whether they're up or down or not because these obviously you can't actually see whether they're up or down very easily at all from the front so those are just some different versions of the 930 series plug-in relays and there are various various other ones um, and it goes on and on the different pin codes and different styles that you can have as well so those are just a few that i've shown you um i'd like to actually show you This is another good one. This is a different timer relay. It's a QJI, different timer. This is a thermal timer. And here you can see we have our biometallic strip, our thermal strip. And again, remember the hot contact and cold contact. So it will heat up, make the top, and then it will cool down and reset itself back to the bottom. So that's just a different one again. And if I can put my hand on the motor drive relay, I will show you one of them. So I'm pretty sure I have one. Finally found one, here we are. Now, the thing to remember about this, this is a motor drive relay for point motors. So it's designed to switch high current when you're driving the point motor. And obviously when you stop driving the point motor, that spinning motor becomes a generator. There's a better back EMF there. And the first thing you'll notice is the drive contacts are separated by a lot of plastic. Um, you just see there, by a lot of plastic. So effectively separate separators between the two sets of contacts because both the positives and the negative feeds to the motors are cut through this relay. Also, one thing that's not easy to see, there is a permanent magnet just 
to the side there and that magnet acts as a blowout so any sparks that are induced by the back emf the permanent magnet's designed to blow that way to snub that out um, that's one of the designs of this relay as well so that is the motor motor drive or motor contact relay